subject linguistics course titled pragmatics and discourse analysis module 13 impoliteness 1 we've often seen people behaving rudely with others or talking impolitely to others many a time we might have even experienced it with friends acquaintances and strangers in this unit and the next We'll talk in detail about the notion of impoliteness in linguistics and the various scholars who have proposed its concepts, tools and strategies. We'll even learn about studies that have been conducted using impoliteness in discourse, pragmatics and stylistics. Impoliteness in comparison to politeness is a relatively recent phenomenon. The theory of politeness given by Brown and Levinson in 1987 is an established approach for research in linguistics for more than two decades. In contrast, it is only in the recent past that researchers have realized that people do not just engage in polite behavior but are also rude and cheeky while talking thus the need for understanding impoliteness Culpepper states that it is common knowledge that though research literature on politeness far outweighs that on impoliteness yet the latter is a growing field that draws on several concepts from multiple disciplines verbal aggression from social psychology verbal abuse in sociology verbal conflict from conflict studies exploitative entertainment from media students workplace interactions in business studies and impoliteness in literature most of these studies show real language users or characters involved in tense situations that warrant the use of aggression in language and behavior irrespective of whether it is initiated by them or others alternatively sometimes impoliteness can be used for diffusing tension and creating humor any work on impoliteness is informed by Brown and Levinson's 1987 now classic writings on politeness where they discussed several politeness strategies that were employed by individuals to save face that is the desire to be appreciated and liked and not be hindered in one's work while performing one's job this was followed by Leeds' discussion of politeness maxims in 1983. However, in these approaches, harmonious interaction was treated as the norm and impoliteness was views. This was followed by Leeds' discussion of politeness maxims in 1983. However, in these approaches, harmonious interaction was treated as the norm and impoliteness was viewed as a deviation from the norm. It's only in the 1980s and 1990s that researchers in socio-pragmatics took note of the anomalies of impoliteness delineating that it was in fact a ubiquitous systematic and strategic practice found in everyday discourse and conflict talk. The concept of face is integral for understanding politeness and impoliteness. In politeness, face means the public self-image of an individual. In common terms, one can understand face as self-esteem of a person. Individuals engage in those kinds of conversations and behavior that maintain or save their face for example agreeing with someone avoiding conflict asking someone to do something in a very polite way etc however 
this notion of face changed with respect to impoliteness. No longer did individuals save one's face to be polite as stated by Brown and Levinson. But according to Legends 1980, they also engaged in face attack and face aggravation when they were impolite. That is, they damaged a person's public image causing the person to feel embarrassed or inferior in some way. For example, talking rudely to someone when standing in a line for a railway ticket or belittling someone who you dislike at a party. A discursive struggle between participants where one sees how this kind of impoliteness can be seen across a conversation or discourse. Thus many politeness analysts such as Sarah Mills 2003 and Lasher and Watts 2008 argue that impoliteness essentially involves a discursive struggle between participants where one sees how the dynamics of power play out between the perpetrator of impoliteness and the recipient. Hence the focus should be on the struggle between participants and their use of impoliteness. Sample the following conversation at the railway ticket counter. Here Mohan is standing in line waiting to buy a ticket when Arun comes in between to buy one. Mohan, will you please shift? I was first in line. Arun, so what? I am in a hurry. Mohan, what do you mean that you are in a hurry? Everyone standing here has work to do, so go back and stand in line. Arun, I won't. Why don't you go back and stand? Mohan, behave yourself and maintain the line or else I'll call the guards. In this brief conversation, we find that impoliteness spreads across the turns of the participants where each is trying to outdo the other. So Mills says it is better to analyze impoliteness as a discursive struggle for power. Several works have been produced that focus on the interplay between impoliteness and power in various social contexts such as political campaigns, conflict and workplace. They include Bowsfield's detailed discussion and analysis of impoliteness and implicature in television shows. Culpepper's model of impoliteness that focuses on the strategies that cause face damage and his recent work that charts out a dynamic interpersonal model of impoliteness and the conventional impoliteness strategies used in media and real life interaction. His interpersonal model includes the following factors on the basis of which speakers assess the use of impoliteness, immediate and broader social context, attitudes and beliefs of the speaker and the hearer, frequency of such incidents in the past for them, their social roles, the physical setting and the time, the specific language structure employed in talk, etc. Culpepper in his work has analyzed the use of impoliteness in the British television show The Weakest Link and he has conducted research on his university students asking them questions on the meanings of impoliteness and their personal experiences about it. Such a research has helped him to understand what real language users feel about impoliteness and its prevalence in society. He has even studied impoliteness in drama, particularly the interaction between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth in Shakespeare's play of the same title. 
in the drama analysis he has found the strategies used by lady macbeth to denounce her husband's fear and insult his manliness so that he maintains courage amidst crisis an important function of impoliteness is its use for humor commonly the graffiti on streets and walls though impolite are humorous even some television shows that have political overtones portray humor by the use of impolite language here impoliteness can be related to implicature the said and the unsaid to convey more than is said let us understand the meanings of impoliteness with so many researchers working in the area and each with a different orientation there seems to be no single definition of impoliteness lake of is of the view that impoliteness is behavior that is intentionally confrontational giving rise to conflictual situations for example deliberately arguing with someone is a form of negative behavior babe includes face threats and social norms as part of impoliteness for her impoliteness is the equivalent of face threatening behavior that is against social expectation and social norms not providing a seat to an elderly person at the bus stand can be one such instance the corophy expands the notion of impoliteness making it a progressive climb from politeness rudeness to impoliteness unmarked politeness unmarked rudeness marked politeness marked rudeness and impoliteness for her impoliteness is equivalent to rudeness that is against social norms and is face threatening to both the hearer and the speaker she says that it is marked rudeness not conventionalized relative to the context of occurrence it threatens the addressee's face and through that the speaker's face but no face threatening intention is attributed to the speaker by the hearer a quarrel between two persons where the face of each is damaged can be taken as an example from this perspective she also states that over politeness can be a form of impoliteness that threatens a person's face this is normally done between participants where there's a lot of social distance such as employer employee relationship bowsfield is of the view that any behavior that is face aggravating in any context can be considered impolite thus broadening the scope of impoliteness for bowsfield impoliteness is inextricably linked to deliberately hostile and unwarranted behavior coupled with aggression the latter increasing the face threat and therefore the face damage this necessarily includes speech act and actions of the participants that is offensive in a particular context for example shouting pushing and speaking loudly in a quiet place unlike the socio pragmatic meaning of impoliteness discussed so far several researchers provide psychological and socio linguistic perspectives on the topic at hand homes at all are of the view that impoliteness is verbal linguistic behavior that threatens a person's social identity violating the norms of appropriacy 
or decorum in social context. Kian Pointner asserts that any form of behavior that is competitive and non-cooperative harms personal relationships by creating an atmosphere of antipathy and that serves egocentric interests is impolite. Therefore, gossiping about someone, not assisting the other when help is required, etc., are all forms of impolite behavior. The focus is on the psychological damage that is incurred, not just the language and behavior of persons, for this kind of behavior creates a negative environment. Even Culpepper's understanding of impoliteness has changed over the years from strategies used for attacking one's face and causing social disruption to a broader view that takes into account the situational context, social norms about politeness and how individuals mediate their identities in these contexts. He states that impoliteness is a negative attitude towards specific behaviors occurring in specific contexts. It is sustained by expectations, desires and or beliefs about social organizations including in particular how one person's or a group's identities are mediated by others in interaction. Situated behaviors are viewed negatively, considered impolite when they conflict with how one expects them to be, how one wants them to be and or how one thinks they ought to be. Such behaviors cause or are presumed to cause offense. Thus, impoliteness can be seen at the individual or group level as behavior that goes against what is expected in a situation. The degree and the quality of offense depends on attitudinal, linguistic, pragmatic, contextual and co-contextual factors. It also depends on the personality and mindset of the individuals involved. We will now talk about the salient concepts of impoliteness as given by Culpepper, namely mock and inherent impoliteness followed by the strategies of impoliteness. Culpepper in his seminal paper Towards an Anatomy of Impoliteness discusses the concept of inherent and mock impoliteness and proposes strategies for impoliteness based on Brown and Levinson's politeness model. According to him, inherent impoliteness occurs when a small number of acts such as digging one's nose or farting, asking or telling someone to not engage in these acts is impolite because of two reasons. These acts are socially considered impolite and in Whichever manner the speaker tells the hearer to refrain from doing these acts, it will be impolite. This is the face of both the speaker and the hearer that will be damaged by telling the hearer not to engage in such an act. Thus, an impolite act does not have virtual or potential offense. In fact, it is impolite by the very act of performing it. Culpepper gives an example of how he was traveling to some place when the driver had the wiper of the car on even though it was not raining. In whichever way Culpepper would have spoken to the driver to switch off the wiper, it would have damaged the face of the driver because it would have meant that the driver was not competent enough. Thus, such an act was inherently impolite. In contrast to inherently impolite language, we have mock impoliteness commonly called banter or as Culpepper puts it, 
impoliteness that remains on the surface since it is understood that it is not intended to cause offence. For example, most of the advertising slogans used by Cliff Dickens, an American graphic designer whose slogans have appeared in several dailies and are available on the internet, are a reverse of what the product claims to sell. They can be considered cheeky, rude and impolite in the sense that they tell the truth about the product but they are a form of banter because the designer clearly does not want his slogans to be taken as insulting or derogatory comments. Look at the one on Altoids, a box of flavored mints popular in America that reads Altoids used for holding anything but mints. Anyone who has had mint from these boxes knows that once the mints have been eaten the box is used for keeping any kind of knickknacks and is thus a useful storage item. Thus the slogan constitutes banter. It is impolite on the surface level but is not to be taken seriously. Another example of mock impoliteness that Culpepper calls as social banter is as follows. Suppose if you arrive late for a friend's party and your friend addresses you as a silly bugger or idiot, you won't mind what they say because you know that they don't mean it seriously. The offense is taken as a joke or banter by both the parties involved and you know that you are still welcome at the party. Culpepper cites research on the use of ritual insults that have been studied by Lubber where African American adolescents abused the female members of the each other's family as part of the game and no one takes offense because it is meant to be taken non-seriously. In fact such behavior is considered uh, a rites of passage into adulthood for African American teenagers. Banter is even found among social groups living in remote areas such as the Eskimo community. We will now discuss in detail Culpepper's strategies of impoliteness which can be applied on any text for analysis. Moreover, paying attention to the language used in a particular strategy is extremely helpful in understanding the use of impoliteness and its context. Culpepper's strategies of impoliteness are modeled on those of Brown and Levinson's as he states impoliteness is very much the parasite of politeness. Brown and Levinson use the variables of relative power, social distance and the rank or size of the imposition of the act involved to measure the extent of a face threatening act that is FTA that is the lesser the imposition of an act the lesser power and social distance there needs to be between participants and lesser is the degree of politeness and vice versa. For example, an employer asking his employee to work on the weekend when he has plans for an outstation trip is imposing on the latter's face. It is a forceful imposition and therefore requires more power and social distance between the two. The employer being the powerful party and hence more politeness is needed by the employer to implement this act. Brown and Levinson discuss five politeness super strategies, the use of which denote the degree of face threat and likewise Culpepper proposes five impoliteness super strategies where the use of each successive strategy increases the level of face threat. We will now discuss each of these super strategies of impoliteness in detail. 
द फर्स्ट वन इज नोन एज बॉल्ड ऑन रिकॉर्ड इम पोलाइटनेस दिस इज अनलाइक ब्राउन एंड लेविंस बॉल्ड ऑन रिकॉर्ड स्ट्रेटेजी दैट हैपन्स इन सम सिचुएशन सच एज एन एमरजेंसी एग्जिट इन केस ऑफ फायर वेर द फैक्ट वेर द फेस ऑफ द हीर इज नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड वन कैन देर फोर बी डायरेक्ट लिविंग आउट पोलाइटनेस in contrast culpepper's super strategy involves the use of speech and behavior that directly impinges on someone's face here face is important culpepper writes that in such situations the face threatening act is performed in a direct clear unambiguous and concise way for example when a mother says don't leave the room to her child when scolding him or her for not completing homework it's a clear directive that threatens the child's face the second one is positive impoliteness here strategies are used to damage the addressee's positive face wants these include harming the hearer's sense of solidarity affiliation and harmony with others for example two children playing with one another do not include a third child who is sitting close by and wants to play with them they do not acknowledge his wishes and thereby hurt his sentiments or positive face making him feel lonely the third super strategy is negative impoliteness here strategies are employed to damage an addressee's negative face wants that include the hearer's desire for freedom of action look at the following exchange between two girls from different economic backgrounds kiran i spent the summer holidays at home with my family members jyoti oh that's so dull we had a great time my father took us to disneyland in america jyoti shows off her financial power vis-a-vis -vis kiran by mocking the way kiran spent her holidays and boasts of her trip to america this section by jyoti figuratively invades kiran's personal space and sense of freedom making her feel small The fourth super strategy is sarcasm or mock impoliteness as the name suggests here the face threat is created by the use of surface level impoliteness that is not meant to be taken seriously Culpepper bases his idea on Leech's concept of irony but he prefers the term sarcasm since it causes more social disruption hence is more impolite for example a student might sarcastically refer to his boastful classmate who pretends to know a lot but actually knows nothing as a genius or an einstein withholding politeness is the last super strategy here face threat is created by not being polite when it is expected for example not greeting someone who greets you is clearly impolite because the other party expects to be greeted each of these super strategies is performed through various output strategies that highlight either positive impoliteness or negative impoliteness culpepper does not explicitly explain what these two types of impoliteness are but we can provide an explanation based on brown and levinson's concept of positive and negative politeness positive politeness is the use of politeness strategies that enhance a hearer's positive face or the desire to be liked while negative politeness is the use of strategies that mitigate a person's negative face that is the desire to not to be impeded in their work thus we can say that positive impoliteness is the use of output strategies that attack someone's positive face 
making them feel embarrassed or hurt or making them feel unwanted in contrast negative impoliteness attacks someone's negative face obstructing their work and compelling them to do what they do not wish to it impinges upon their sense of freedom like brown and levinson culpepper too provides a list of output strategies for both types of impoliteness we will now discuss each of the strategies for positive impoliteness and negative impoliteness the first strategy for positive impoliteness is to ignore and snub the other that is failing to acknowledge the other person's presence and their wants making them feel hurt for example not asking one of your friends to go to a party with you while you ask another friend exclude the other from an activity creating in groups and out groups thereby heightening their loneliness not including some family members in your family outing can be an example of this kind of impoliteness another strategy is to disassociate or distance oneself from the other deny association or any common ground with the other person for example avoid sitting or playing together if you have a fight with your best friend being disinterested unconcerned and unsympathetic to the hearer's presence and his or her wants if someone tells you about their illness and you are not interested in listening to them it is a form of positive impoliteness the next one is using inappropriate identity markers for example using the title and surname in a close relationship mr rajiv mehta for one's husband or using a nickname in case of a distant relationship referring to one's colleague by their nickname in public the use of obscure or secretive language is the next strategy for positive impoliteness for example when we mystify the other person with jargon or technical language or when we use a code that is known to everyone in the group except the addressee talking in a vernacular known to others but not the target then seek disagreement by speaking on a sensitive topic as one's religion or sexual behavior making the other person feel uncomfortable for example using silence or jokes to create tension or engaging in small talk using taboo words mostly abusive and profane language for example when men use expletives before their female colleagues whom they do not know so well the last strategy of positive impoliteness is calling names that is using derogatory terms of address for the other person for example referring to your chubby friend as moti or mote and other terms that mock their obesity or referring to someone who um wears spectacles as chashmish we will now learn about the strategies of negative impoliteness as given by culpepper they are fewer in number as compared to the ones for positive impoliteness the first one is to frighten the other person that is to instill a belief that actions detrimental to them will occur for example scaring someone into believing that if they do not perform a particular religious ritual they will fall ill to condescend scorn or ridicule the target by emphasizing one's power is the next strategy one way of doing this is by being contemptuous for example the character of estella is 
quite condescending in her behavior towards Pip in Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. The next one is to not treat the other person seriously or to belittle them by using diminutives. For example, referring to one's wife as little baby or little princess can be considered impolite if the wife strongly wishes to assert her identity. Invading the other person's space literally, for example, by positioning ourselves physically closer to the other than the relationship permits or metaphorically by asking or speaking about information that is too intimate considering the relationship is another form of negative impoliteness. For example, asking about a person's sex life, an intensely personal issue is clearly impolite. Explicitly associating the other with a negative aspect such as using personal pronouns, I and you, when blaming the other for some action. The last strategy is to put the hearer's indebtedness on record that is speaking about what the speaker has done for the hearer causing him or her to feel embarrassed. For example, if the speaker starts telling the hearer in front of others that he had helped him in case of a financial crisis and so the hearer owns the speaker some amount of money. Apart from these, we are informed that the structure of the conversation can be more susceptible to impoliteness as is the case with conflict talk. Moreover, nonverbal behavior such as shouting or avoiding eye contact can magnify impoliteness. In this unit, we have discussed in detail the notion of impoliteness, its various meanings the notions of mock and inherent impoliteness and its super strategies and strategies as given by Culpepper. However, Culpepper is not the only theorist on impoliteness. There are many others. Therefore, in the next unit, we'll discuss the strategies of impoliteness as given by other theorists, the relation between gender and impoliteness, and then ana analyze a text using all the strategies of impoliteness we have learned so far. Thank you.